Hey, 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 Festy Man reporting. Day two, the Saturday of Gabe Fest 10. So, following on from the previous um, video. Oh, by the way, I realised a lot of people have said you haven't been doing these um, much anymore. Uh, a lot of it is to do with the fact of the change of vehicle. There is something about this. I did my very first. Um, report from here and it, it's like home it is i've got a lot of lovely memories here maybe i should just keep this as a recording studio so uh that's why i've hopped back in it tonight i know i'm gonna sell it i keep saying i am gonna sell it it's um it just costs too much to sit around on the um on the driveway uh, um so i've got the um the folding camper which i've fixed and uh it's all good so anyway i'm in here so we go back to the saturday it, it had been a great night very very drunk but woke up feeling not too bad uh <laughs> the trailer tent is divided you into two two bedrooms well there's a cloth partition uh so i woke up and, and miff's legs are sort of just across so it even managed to sort of knock the wall down and, and come across um he was snoring away, and apparently um, it was he was trying to do it in harmony with me because I snored a lot, and a lot of people around the campsite could hear me. Um, so we walked off. I said, "Let's get something to eat." I've got the kitchen. I wanted to do it all. I had eggs, bacon, sausages, cups of tea, the milk. I had cool boxes. I was prepared. No, no, no. Let's go up to the the burger stand. I'll buy you some. I'll treat you. I'll treat you. Okay. So we walked up there, and as we're walking up, he's telling me. Um, do you know what? I didn't have a thing to eat yesterday. I was starving, he said. But I went bit. He said, didn't have a thing to eat. I said, well, you had those little nibbles I bought. He said, yeah, that's, that don't count. That don't count. So he goes up to the burger bar and uh, cups of tea and we ordered up. And a woman behind the bar said, you were steaming last night. You were absolutely rotten. He said, how do you know? How do you know? She says, well, you was up here ordering food. He said, no. She says, you was. He said, what do you order? She said, burgers, hot dogs, chips, the lot. <laughs> she says... But you leant on the counter and there's a raised bit and he bent it, didn't he? So uh, she was all right about it. But yeah, he was just, um, and his memory was was gone. And I reminded him a few bits about, you know, meeting the uh, Urban Voodoo Machine there. Did we? <laughs> Did you remind him, remember spending about £100 on shots? Strawberry vodka, hazelnut vodka. Yeah, very beautiful. Not my scene, though, actually. I just like a beer. I think shots are a waste of money. That's another point, isn't it? So, the day had started, and we uh, we sat there, and people were milling about. Not a lot of people this early morning. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> How disgusting, Steve. How disgusting. Uh, yes, and we mooched about. We said hello to a few people. And... He said, come on, let's walk down this way. I said, no, no, let's walk through the campsite. We're going to see people. We're going to say hello. And as you're going through, Sarah Savage come up and savagely attacked us. Uh, <laughs> she, they, you know, typical style. She hadn't been asleep. Uh, none of them have been to sleep. They've been up talking. Go, 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 go. So it took us about an hour to get back. But on the way back, people were doing, hey, hey, hiya. Thanks. Thanks a lot. What for? The shots you bought us. <laughs> Myth must have bought shots for everyone. He couldn't remember a thing. Um, and so that was it. But the shame was, it was Myth's uh, second anniversary. He met his beautiful girlfriend, Jenny McGag, in there. Uh, but they were off on holiday, so she came to pick him up. And the day continued. Um, I was feeling a little bit hungover, so I was taking it easy. Mooched around a little while. Then state to my place in the main field. Um, right, so we'll go through the list a, a, a little bit. So I'm just trying to think. Some of the early bands. Um, James Parkin, I think. Um, Tom DeLue. A few others, just solo guitarists. Not my scene. Not my scene at all. Uh, but obviously other people's. And I can, I'll tell you this now. Just because I don't think they're, they're not on my radar doesn't say they're not any good. They are good. All these people play there. They're very good. They're very accomplished. Most of them sing their own songs, you know, and they play. And they play to people not paying attention apart from their own family and friends. So I'd like to say a big thank you for turning up and doing that. So um, let me try and think. Yeah, the first band of note was the um, Teriatrix, um a five piece of women um 
let me say in the um moving into twilight years uh, probably my age maybe a bit old a bit younger but really good they do covers um you know they, they're not going to win any competitions but for entertainment <coughs> really good you can't knock it you could go in a pub and you could listen to them and you'd be up dancing and that's the main thing that is the main thing they were fun and it started the um the afternoon um warming up so i am going to struggle a little bit so we had um oh god continental liaisons something like that it's, <laughs> it's continental liaisons it's definitely liaisons um so this quasi punk um new romantic electronic band very reminiscent of late 70s early 80s a bit of everything thrown in there the music was good the um pardon me for saying it but i just thought you know like a lot of bands um the lead sing was a bit of an oddball but you know many of them are big shades prancing around and apparently the word was that the, you know up in the bar what the fucking hell is this <laughs> what's this shit you shouldn't do that because just because you don't like something doesn't make it shit because there are a lot of people who do like it okay you've got to be fair and take the rough with the smooth now i quite enjoyed it would i pay to go and see them again no but if they were at a festival again i wouldn't go off i would listen because entertainment value it was good it was really good um you know there was lots of um how do you call it like a um speech spoken word you know a bit like frankie goes to hollywood when the world, you know, when the siren goes, you've got to do this. Bollocks, I can't even remember. So anyway, they, they come on and, and they went. We had the Terriatrix. Um, I'm trying to progress through the afternoon. Uh, um, oh, God, before I get to them. Anyway, um, great one. Uh, I'd never, I'd heard of them, but again, I didn't know much about them. I listened to them a little bit on Spotify. The Del Toras. Now... I'd gone away, I'd come back, I had to go and top up with some booze, and they'd started, and I can hear the sound. And I thought it was the DJ playing, because he was in between times, he was playing some really good sound, 60s, 70s, 80s rock. And I thought, this, you know, wow. I go up, and it's a three-piece, um, lead guitar, bass guitar, and drums. The drama was all action, just pounding out, sweating. The bass player was just like a lot of bass players, just doing his stuff. The lead guitarist, the lead singer, wow, he could play guitar. It was my sound, it really was. And I just liked the fact that the guy couldn't stand still. As soon as he was playing his solos, he was all over the place dancing. And it really was. I liked his sound, I liked his style, and his voice as well. Uh, right, you could get into that whole shouty bit. Um, it was almost that, uh, what would you call it, thrash metal. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, don't you? It was it was bordering on that, but it was controlled. It was just pulled back and sometimes really quite shouty, but controlled. The guy could sing overall a great package. He, um, I've just remembered another band, Nico Rossi. Yeah, I'll come back to that. Del Torres, loved you guys. You played last night, uh, the joiners. Sorry, I couldn't come to see you. Um, Mum's ill, so I had to go and see her. But one for the future, for me, for Del Torres, if they're another festival, I will be going along to see them. I have a feeling they might be at um, Horton Stomp. Get in touch with me to let me know. Yeah, Nico Rossi, sort of a pseudo-punk, very good guitarist. Funny guy, funny guy. Um, you know, when he come on, I looked at him, I thought, well, he's going to be sort of like the Beach Boys, something like that. But, you know, he wasn't. It was like a, a little bit punky, rocky. I would say I was sat with... Um, John Sansom and Perry Flat at the time, they knew him very well. Um, yeah, so uh, that was... Uh, John got up and sung with them, enjoyed that. Now, moving on from the Del Toras, I'm going to miss out some bands here, not on purpose. Oh, it's getting dark. Now, we come to a band who I had been looking forward to seeing, along with the Urban Voodoo Machine. Um, I hadn't heard a lot about them before. Uh, Gabe sent me a, a video of them from YouTube and um, it was Gosha, his wife, and Juicy who had persuaded him to ask them to play and it took him a lot, a lot. They are quite, they're very big. 
Um, they've toured all over the place, played a big festival in Japan. Uh, now they come on, um, the girls stood there, seemed very quiet, quite pretty. Um, they did a bit of warming up and um, the lineup was different than I'd seen in the videos. And I, okay, and I, again, I'd listened to the music and I liked it, I did like it. Uh, now in the videos, it was double bass, um, accordion, um, the drums, whatever they're called. Um, guitar, lead guitar, and um, Barbarella. I've just told you, I haven't told you the band. It's Barbarella's Bang Bang, and the it revolves around the girl. She is Barbarella, Barbara. Um, and they started to play. And she started off with just this high pitched note that she held. She held perfectly, and she smiled. And she was transformed from Barbara to Barbarella on stage and it just came alive it was just like vaudeville um, it was magic her voice it was quite it's quite a high pitched some people would say screechy but again it's controlled and she could sing beautifully but here's a comparison she actually did Lena Lovitch my lucky numbers one and it was perfect because she has that type of voice but if you can imagine someone who can control it and sing different styles so I never heard Lena Lovitch sing anything else well, it was it was mesmerising. She every song was a story. She introduced it, um, and she took on different persona. You know, happy, sad, stern, uh, and in between, that's just this um yeah, a, a pretty girl. But let's not take that away from her style. Just a performer. I think she's one for the future. I spoke to Sue Blackwood. Many of you will know Sue Blackwood, who has a history with music and reporting and very, very knowledgeable. And she came up to me afterwards and said, that girl, with or without that band, will be a big name one day. And I totally agree. You know, someone who, a diminutive figure, very pretty, but to hold um, an audience like that. And the music was uh, fantastic. Now, I've read sort of lately that, the style has changed. She's moved from the gypsy folk rock, so the accordion's gone, um, the double bass, um, and it's slightly more traditional, so it's a little bit more rock, and I like that. Um, the single surgery is, is out, and we sung um, Cowboy Job, which is going to be the next single, and they are brilliant. They are really good, and I have a feeling that she does write them. Um, I was enthralled. I really was. I was just... Um, captivated and then she did this beautiful thing she um asked juicy now juicy is the daughter of gabe and gosha who own the farm and arrange it all um well in fact it's if you have a look at the posters it always says juicy tulula is it and she asked her up on stage and sung how wonderful was that you know that was a beautiful moment juicy was just there she's gonna be you said what a what a um a childhood she's gonna have um Yes, yes. As you can tell, it was, um, you do get that now and again. You see bands and for different reasons, they stick with you. You know, Quinn's Quinny one, uh, the Cat Ratchers, they do it because of their enormous energy. This girl had energy, but it was all controlled and just massively talented. And yeah, you know, I will make a point of going to see them. They've got a, a bi-monthly gig up in London. So hopefully I'll, I'll go up there soon. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it really was. It lived up to all expectations. The crowd loved it. They could appreciate it as well. Um, and then uh, they won. They were the um, they won the headline. They were second to the, the penultimate. They were, um, and I think it's probably because they wanted to get away. I don't know because. But the Beak Water came on. Now the Beak Water are a covers band, but a very, very good band. The only thing is, it's a Pompey supporter. Oh, Jesus Christ, fancy. No, I, I can't hold anyone against that. It's all banter. Guy, come on. Got the frizzy hair, Jim Morrison style. But they were good. They're very talented doing the um, covers. But I think they did them with style. They didn't just, like, knock them out, knock them out. They had a little thought. They were just slight arrangement with them. Um, but I must admit, though, I by then I was flagging horrendously. Um, for those of you who can't remember, the Saturday the weather changed and it was windy. It was windy. Gale Force 10, I believe. Tents were being ripped up. There was about four or five in the um, skip when I went 
past and in the afternoon it really had started to get quite chilly and for the first time ever I hadn't been prepared normally I just oh, put a coat in I put a coat in just in case and it wasn't because I was thinking oh the weather is beautiful I just completely forgot and it was chilly that day uh, uh, so uh, I didn't have anything to wear so I was starting to feel it so uh, but when the wind dropped the weather it was still quite warm but there was this fantastic guy there called Vincent um, dressed up oh what would you call him like a, a court jester very multi-stripe Joseph and his multicoloured coat and he offered to lend me a coat which I would have done I would have taken um, but by the end of the day I, I had flagged because of the copious amounts of alcohol I'd had the day before and I topped up that day and I was tired because of the cold so I left halfway through uh, the beat quarter um, listened to them back at the um, the tent the uh, trailer tent and I went to sleep only to be awoken oh, two three o'clock in the morning by torrential rain and you keep waking up thinking well that's stopping a minute stopping a minute two o'clock in the afternoon it was still torrential rain you know just uh but the trailer tent which is oh god 86 1986 so 30 years old uh yeah yeah it survived there was i found a couple of little leaks and it's where the bars the we're touching the canvas so I'm going to fix that but it's done a brilliant job for me so I haven't been to a lot of festivals this year but that was amazing Gabe thank you very much for your hard work and I know how hard it is thank you for everyone who come along and joined in I'm sure you all enjoyed it now spread the word because next year it's Gabe's 60th birthday yes he is joining me in the realms of the chosen few those men who reach the age of 60 and still look good <laughs> yeah that's it yeah um, I'm back in the van I'm gonna be for long I will attempt to do more of these soon hope you've all enjoyed this it's 17 minutes long I've gone on a little bit I know Yes, five minutes is the um optimum. <laughs> optimum. I'm still drunk, aren't I? <laughs> old. I don't know why it's all back to one old speckled hen. Here we are. Had a little barbecue by myself. Uh, so yeah, it's um. I will catch you soon, guys. Okay. The next one is booked. Is acoustic movement and um. Horton Stomp. Now that's a good lineup. Urban Voodoo Machine, <laughs> Urban Voodoo Machine again. Um, Quinn's Quinny, Johnny Boxcar. In between, I've got a couple of um, big blues festivals. Colm Blues Festival. That'd be a great one with a wonderful backwater old blues man. Hey, have a lovely time, guys. Can you feel the love? <laughs>